Hi gang, welcome back for mat yoga for the throat chakra or Vishuddha. So thanks for joining us. I have really appreciated all of the views that we've had um, over this chakra series. I hope you've been finding it to be beneficial, helping us to tune up those chakras and get everything running in good balanced order. Um, the throat chakra, um, obviously you and I can just tell by the name of it that it's located in the throat area, but I wanna point out what that actually encompasses. It encompasses the thyroid, which controls our metabolism, jaw, neck, mouth, tongue, and larynx. So um, I think a lot of us can um, fully get on board with thinking that the way that we make sound and the way we speak could be hindered by a blocked throat chakra, but also um, our thyroid may not be running as it should be if we're blocked in that area. And you might be wondering, well, what does a blocked throat chakra look like? So let me tell you, um, a, signs of a blocked fifth chakra, it may, we may have an inability to express ourselves and maybe often we're being misinterpreted and misunderstood. We might be feeling lost for words on the regular. Um, difficulty being honest with ourselves. Now, here are some physical things, a lump in the throat, a sore throat, grinding teeth, earaches, and sinus infections could be a physical outward sign of a blocked fifth chakra. Uh, temporomandibular joint dysfunction, TMJ, uh, for the jaw, that could be a result of a blocked chakra, and thyroid issues. Um, you know, if our thyroid is underactive, then our metabolism is slower. And so that could cause lots of issues in the body. Um, so if we want to bring balance to the throat chakra, here's what a good balanced throat chakra uh, would look like, okay? We are able to speak our truth in a healthy and loving way. We're good listeners as well as effective speakers and writers. And we will be creative, helpful, and able to ask for help when we need it. That's a good one, able to ask for help when needed. So if you're thinking to yourself, wow, Becky, I am having some signs of a blocked throat chakra. Don't worry, today's practice is targeted specifically to the throat chakra. Um, we're gonna do certain poses that will activate that area. The breath work that we do, the ujjayi breathing that we pretty much do at every class, that stimulates your throat chakra. Uh, we're gonna sing to our throat chakra with the little seed mantra, which is hum, just like a hummingbird, H-U-M. We're gonna sing to our throat chakra today. And I just wanna remind you, the color for this element is sky blue. The element, excuse me, the color of the chakra is sky blue. The element is ether which is described as the space between the clouds and the upper atmosphere or space like the universe. So if you decide to pull out a light blue sky blue sweater and you put it on with purpose and you say, I'm going to wear this blue sweater today because I want to try to bring some balance to my throat chakra. And throughout the day, when you look down and you see that blue sweater, maybe you give it a you know gentle rub to feel the softness of the fabric, we remind ourselves, I'm wearing this color to help bring balance to my throat chakra. So when you put on those colors with purpose, not just grabbing any random thing out of your closet, but when you put them on with purpose and you revisit that purpose throughout the day, that can be helpful as well. So. Whether you're here to find balance in the throat chakra or you just want to have a different yoga practice for your day, I'm glad you're here. Let's go ahead and get started. So I always like to begin our class standing with feet about hips distance apart on the ground. It's a good sturdy stance. Shoulders stacked right above the hips, stacked right above the knees, stacked right above the feet. Everything is all in good alignment. And then I like to unwind through the shoulders. So whether you're taking on this practice at the beginning of your day and you just need to open up after a good night's sleep or you're taking this practice at the end of the day, 
Maybe you've been rounding the shoulders forward at a computer desk or um, working, you know, in kind of a forward way, which is very common for us. Maybe even just driving, you know. Let's unwind here. Open up through the chest. Breathing in through the nose and out through the nose with our ujjayi breath. So when we inhale, we pull that air all the way to the back of the throat, feel it swirl around back there, and then exhale, push it all the way back out through the nose. Let's relax those shoulders back and down, palms facing forward into Dasana, Mountain Pose. And as we settle into our Ujjayi breath, if you're comfortable closing your eyes, we can do that now. Blocking out any distractions, bringing our focus to right here, right now in this present moment and allowing any stray thoughts to fade away. And as we hear the sound of our healthy breathing, we're reminded to breathe throughout each pose, especially if a pose is challenging for us. Let's keep breathing rather than holding the breath. And we make a promise to ourselves to listen to the body at all times during this practice, easing up whenever needed and giving ourselves more of a challenge whenever wanted. And we remember to use each inhale to breathe peace and calm into the body and the mind. And with each exhale, we're letting go of judgment and competition, even when they're directed toward ourselves. Letting go of our own expectations as well. Allowing ourselves to be pleasantly surprised by what these healthy bodies can do when given the opportunity. Let's take a couple more cleansing and centering ujjayi breaths. And when we're ready, let's slowly open our eyes. Now let's inhale tall through the crown of our head and on the exhale, a gentle turn of the head to look over one shoulder. Inhaling back to the center Exhale, let's turn in the opposite direction. Inhaling back to the center. A gentle tilt of the head to one side. Inhale, lift, lift, lift. Exhale, tilting to the other side. Inhale and lift. Now let's exhale, looking out over one shoulder. On the inhale, let's look up on a slight diagonal as a bird looks out of its nest. And on the exhale, circle down toward the chest. And on the inhale, lift to look out of another bird's nest. Exhaling down toward the chest. Inhaling and lifting. Exhaling down toward the chest. Inhale and lift. Gently moving through the neck here lubricating that upper spinal area and also of course stimulating our throat chakra the shuddha
one more time, circling down toward the chest and gently turning the head back to the center. Now let's inhale one long arm up toward the ceiling and then switch as we exhale. Opening up through the chest while lubricating the shoulders. Now let's take both arms back and look over one shoulder toward the palm of your hand. Then exhale to the center. Now look back toward the other side. Exhaling back to the center. Let's inhale as we look back. Exhale to the center. gentle head turns here are stimulating the shuddha, the throat chakra. Now let's relax those hands. Take a nice wide stance on the mat here, toes and knees pointing in the same direction. Let's start off with moonflower flow, arms up in a star. And on the exhale, bring your elbows in toward the ribs. Now again, we have the shoulders here stacked right over the hips. I'm doing my best not to lean forward or back with the chest. Just moving straight up and down here. One more moonflower. Let's turn these into hinging sunflowers. Bend through the knees, hinge forward with a flat back, and then rise up. Now we don't need to go much further than chest parallel to the ground here. If we take that head all the way down to the floor and then pop right back up, we might experience some dizziness there. So let's just use a flat back chest parallel to the ground, feeling that wonderful stretch behind each leg. Two more times through. Now, a little bit of prayer flow. Palms touch overhead. We bring the hands to heart center. If it's not comfortable for you to take the arms overhead and circle sweep them, here's another nice option. Take those arms to shoulder height and then bring them right back into the heart. Remember gang, everything that we do in our class is meant to feel good in the body. It may feel challenging at times, but nothing is ever meant to feel uncomfortable. So if you need to change things up, on any given day, please do. Always listen to the body as it whispers for little changes, or maybe it's whispering for more of a challenge. One more time, bringing those hands to heart center, lifting up. Now, let's go ahead and take both arms down to shoulder height, turning my left palm to the floor keeping that right palm up. Let's look to our right palm and inhale. On the exhale, turn the arms over. Shoulder spirals. And you wanna turn the whole arm all the way up to the shoulder here rather than only turning at the wrist. One more time on each side. Now let's take both arms up to a star, bend one knee and lean into side angle pose. Inhale and rise up, lean on in to the other side. Inhaling and rising. Side angle flow. 
Now, if you're guarding your knees today, maybe you're just gonna do a side bend and then lift and then a side bend. Again, everything can be modified whenever we need it to be. And it's, you know, it's never like you're cheating or anything if you're changing how we're doing some of the movements. Of course, that's not the case. We're honoring the body by listening to it and moving gently through those areas that need a little more TLC. One more side angle flow on each side. Now let's bring those arms all the way down. Let's step all the way up to the top of the mat with our feet hips distance apart. Let's take both arms overhead, swan dive down to a forward fold. And on the inhale, lifting to monkey, just resting the hands on our shins and exhale down to forward fold. Rise up tall, swan diving down. Inhaling to monkey, exhale forward fold, rising, swan diving down. starting to feel our internal temperature rising in a good positive way with these flowing movements. Now let's swan dive down, holding our forward fold for just a few breaths, taking the time to straighten the legs as much as is comfortable today. Then let's step all the way back for downward dog, reaching those heels as close to the ground as we can manage with hips up high toward the sky. And then we start to pedal the heels, alternating heel presses. reaching both heels back and down. When we're ready, gently, we come into an all fours posture. Inhaling as we arch the back for cow, stretching or extending through the neck. And on the exhale, we curl up into our cat pose. Inhaling into cow, lengthening the neck. Exhale as we curl into a cat pose. cat and cow. I have often told my students it's such a wonderful way to lubricate the spine and it is. But again here it stimulates the throat chakra too as we stretch out the neck a little bit. One more time curling up into that cat pose coming back to all fours. On the next inhale, let's take one arm out long in front of us and the opposite leg stretches behind us. Then we exhale to the mat. Inhale, other arm reaches out, opposite leg behind, and then back to all fours. Spinal balance flow, reaching out to our longest length. Coming back to all fours, let's reach the hips back toward the heels. Coming into Balasana, extended child's pose. Now we want to relax through the neck here. So 
So think about almost bringing your head down to rest on the mat if it's comfortable to do that, or just angling it in that direction. That actually releases a lot of tension that we may be holding on to in the neck, and that's a wonderful way to stimulate the throat chakra. Now let's walk the hands over on one diagonal. Doesn't matter which one, we'll do both. And open up the side body in downward facing thunderbolt pose. Now walk those hands back to the center and over to the other side. Now walk those hands back to the center. On the next inhale, let's shift the whole body forward to a strong kneeling plank, shoulders over the wrists. Then keep the elbows close to the body as we lower down to the ground. On the inhale, let's lift like a snake in the grass for Cobra. And then press the body all the way back into child's pose. Again, let's take it forward on the inhale kneeling plank. Exhale, lower down, brushing those ribs inside of the elbows. On the inhale, lift the heart away from the mat like a snake in the grass. And then press all the way back. Inhaling forward. Exhaling as we lower down. Inhaling to cobra. Exhale, coming all the way back. Think about extending through the neck in our cobra pose. Nice and long and coming all the way back to child's pose. Just a couple more times through. all the way back to child's pose. Take a couple breaths here. Now let's lift the hips so we can curl the toes to the ground, pressing those heels back and down, coming back to that downward dog. Nice strong abdominals here, supporting the back as it's lengthening. Two more breaths. Now gently walk up or hop up to the hands and rise up tall. Now let's hinge forward into an airplane pose. Palms down, arms reaching back on the diagonal. On the inhale, let's lift up and bring those arms, palms up in front of us. Exhaling into airplane, inhaling and rising. Two more times. Now let's take those arms out to the side, arms overhead, swan diving to a forward fold, stepping back for downward dog. Inhaling forward to a high plank or kneeling plank. Lower down with control lifting to cobra or upward dog, then bringing the body back to downward dog. Moving up to our hands, rising as we inhale, and exhaling to a strong chair pose. Inhaling arms overhead, swan diving down, stepping back for downward dog. Inhaling to the plank of choice and lower with control, Lift to cobra or upward dog, then take it back to downward dog. 
moving up to our hands, rising tall, and exhale to a strong chair pose. Swan diving down, stepping back, downward dog. Inhale to the plank of choice and lower, lift to upward dog or cobra, curl the body back, downward dog. Moving up to our hands, rising and exhaling to chair. Keep following the breath here, moving at our own pace. Two more times through. Of course, we can always take breaks whenever we need to. Last time through. that good heat in the body, warming all of us, saluting that sun energy in the sky above us and that same wonderful sun energy inside each one of us. Now bring those arms all the way down when you're ready. Ah, hopefully we're feeling good and warmed up now. If you have a drink, please feel free to take one at any time. All right. Now let's use our pyramid pose here. Rolling the shoulders back. Let's take our right foot a short step back so we have a staggered stance. Inhaling, straightening both legs, pulling the abdominals in. Lead with the heart as you hinge forward into pyramid pose. You can keep the hands on the hips or walk down to the upper leg or down past the knee. Just always remember that your hands should be resting on that front leg as a butterfly is resting on a flower. You might even take those hands all the way down to the mat. Two more breaths in pyramid, feeling that mighty stretch behind the front leg. Now let's walk ourselves all the way back upright. Let's take that back foot forward. This time we'll take the left foot a short step back. Inhale, straightening the legs. On the exhale, we hinge forward from the hips, leading with the heart, perhaps walking down that front leg. The further that you hinge forward, the more lengthening you'll have behind that front leg. So let's be sure that we're listening to the body at all times. Now let's 
Let's inhale, lifting, lifting, stepping that back foot forward. Let's take both arms overhead. And on the exhale, take a snow angel twist over to one side. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, twisting over to the other side. Inhale as you lift. Exhale, twisting. One more snow angel twist on each side. Now let's bring those arms all the way back down. Let's reach behind ourselves and find that bony spot at the bottom of the spine, hands in a fist on either side of that spot. Let's inhale, lifting up through the shoulders, and on the exhale, we roll them back and down for standing camel. We zip up those abdominal muscles here, engaging them, and we stretch out a little bit here through the neck. Now, we always want to be mindful in camel that we're not bending the head too far back because that might compromise the upper spine So let's feel that nice elongation and extension of the neck in standing camel. Let's take four more breaths. Now gently, gently, we come back upright. We roll those shoulders forward several times and then roll them back and down. All right, now from the top of the mat, let's take both feet hips distance apart, preparing for warrior one. Let's take our right foot as far back as we can step with that whole right foot connecting to the ground. And we turn our hips to face forward, engaging the abdominals. Good bend in that front knee. It's right above the ankle. I'm going to use prayer pose here for the hands today. Looking out into the distance with a soft gaze through the eyes. Warrior one. Now when you're ready, let's take that right foot and step it back like we're on a balance beam here. The right foot is parallel to the back of the mat. The left toes are still facing forward, looking out over that left middle finger for warrior two. And the shoulders are stacked right above the hips here. So we don't want to be too far forward or too far back. So shoulders over the hips, even if you have to hold on to your own to measure, are they right above each other? I'm hoping they are. Let's take that left palm up to the ceiling. Let's reach forward as if you're serving your friends and then tilt the upper body back. We still have that good bend in the front knee. You can either look past your front arm, look straight ahead toward the long right side of your mat, or you can look up to that high hand for balance challenge and an extension for the neck to stimulate the shuda. Now let's come back to warrior two. Relax those arms and step up to the top of the mat. 
Let's head right over to the other side, taking that left foot back for warrior one, turning those hips to face forward. Choose any arm options you like for warrior one. Now when we're ready, let's pick up that left foot, stepping back into warrior two, looking out over that right middle finger in that balance beam-like stance. Turn it up toward the sky. Reach forward first to lengthen the spine. Keep that front leg bent as we tilt back into reverse warrior. back to warrior two we relax those arms gently stepping up to the top of the mat now let's use our tree pose today shifting our balance over to one foot pointing through the opposite toes let's draw that foot in we can have toes at ground level with a nice open hip or up on the calf or high above the knee on that inner thigh whichever you like for today Engaging the abdominal muscles, focusing on a steady focal point across the room. Now let's gently shake those legs out. Let's shift all of our balance over to the other leg. Point through the opposite toes. Again, we can have the legs at ground level, calf level, or up high on that inner thigh. If you have on slippery pants, just roll up that supporting pant leg. A little skin on skin contact can be helpful. Breathing. Now when you're ready, shake out those limbs and let's take a nice wide stance on the mat, getting ready for a moon salutation. Let's inhale both arms overhead to a five-pointed star. On the exhale, let's take a side bend. Inhale, lift, lift, lift. Exhale, over to the other side. Inhaling and lifting. Now let's hinge forward with straight legs reaching to the floor or toward it. As we inhale, let's gently twist through the trunk over to one side, and on the exhale, come back toward the ground. Other side, inhaling as we twist. Exhale, back to the ground. Let's bend through one knee, come into a lunge. Bend through the other knee for another lunge, and then rise all the way back up to star. That's the whole thing. Exhale to a side bend. Lift, lift, lift as you inhale. Exhale to the other side. Inhaling and lifting. Exhale, hinging forward. Inhale, lift. 
exhale back toward the ground other side inhaling and exhale toward the floor inhale with a bent knee exhale over to the other knee rise up as we inhale this time let's follow the breath through our moon salutations Now let's bring those arms all the way back down. Now, stepping all the way up, stepping all the way up to the top of the mat here, let's inhale both arms overhead, swan diving to a four, uh, downward dog, excuse me, to a forward fold first, and then stepping back for downward dog. Pressing down through the heels here, Let's inhale, lifting the left leg for three-legged dog. Bend that left knee, open the left hip to the side, and bring that whole bent knee under the body, resting it on the mat, preparing for pigeon. So I'm gonna take my right leg and my right toes and start to scooch them as far back as I can. And I can lay those right toes down and stay lifted through pigeon. And I can stretch out through the neck here. Or I could fold over that front leg and let the neck relax. So it's Yogi's choice which version of pigeon you'd like to use today. Now when you're ready, if you're folded forward, let's walk our hands back toward that bent knee, curl the back toes down, lift back up to downward dog, pressing both heels toward the ground. Engaging the abdominals here, let's lift the other leg for three-legged dog, bend that right knee, open, whoo, had a little bit of slide there, open the right hip to the side, and then bring that whole bent knee under the body and walk those left toes back. And again, we can use the, the lifted pigeon here or we can fold forward. And if you're folding forward, remember, sort of put your head down toward the mat stretching out the back side of the neck. Four more breaths here. Now when you're ready, walk those hands back toward that front knee. Just roll your bent hip over to the side and bring those legs around to the front. And I'm using bent legs here, and I'm gonna put my palms down behind me, right behind the hips. And we're going to stretch those legs out to long legs with pointed toes. On the next inhale, let's lift our bottom away from the mat into an inclined plank, opening up through the chest, and again, we might Extend through the neck here. Breathing rather than holding the breath. Now gently, gently lower yourself to the mat and let's take an easy seated pose here. One of our most peculiar poses that helps us to stretch out through the tongue is called lion pose. It's silly and it's fun and it's super beneficial to the throat chakra. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a big inhale 
And when we exhale, we're gonna press the chest forward as you would for cow pose. And we're gonna stick our tongue out to its longest length and open up our eyes as big as they'll open and make a roar sound like a lion, like ah. Or if, you, if that's hard on your throat, you might go like a hard exhale. So let's try it. We'll do it three times through. Inhaling. Just roar all the way to the end of your exhale. Two more times. Don't forget to open the eyes big. Very nice Vishuddha activation with our lion's pose. Now, let's go ahead and sing to our throat chakra by chanting that word hum. And we're gonna do it five times through, high or low, whatever sound you wanna make is up to you. Let's inhale. our way down to the ground with bent legs let's hold on behind the legs and roll down gently hugging the knees in toward the chest releasing the lower back now let's keep the knees bent but lower the feet to the ground feet are hips distance apart palms down toward the mat on the next inhale let's peel up one vertebrae at a time lifting into bridge pose. Bridge pose has a nice elongated neck here, even when we're laying down, stimulating that throat chakra. And we think to ourselves, I speak the truth to myself and to others. Twist. Now 
more gently behind the legs back to the center. Let's find our most comfortable position for Shavasana pose. You might have your legs long to the ground in that traditional corpse pose, or you might keep your knees bent if that's more comfortable on the back. I'm gonna turn my lights down. You're welcome to do the same. So let's find a comfortable position here for Shavasana today. With each inhale, let's breathe peace and calm into the body and the mind. And with each exhale, we allow ourselves to let go of stray thoughts. And we might envision a sky blue lotus flower blossoming at our throat chakra today after all of this good throat chakra stimulating work. Let us slowly begin to awaken these bodies from this balancing, mindful rest. Starting to invite small movements into the fingers and the toes, gently waking them. And beginning to breathe a little more deeply, filling all parts of this physical body with good nourishing oxygen. Finding our hearts are shining with gratitude today. Grateful for this shared practice. Grateful for this body that can move in so many ranges of motion. And always grateful for this breath that carries us from pose to pose and minute to minute of our everyday lives. Now, if we're lying down for Shavasana, let's take a moment to gently bend the knees, hugging them in a little closer to the chest, perhaps gently rocking those knees side to side, massaging the back in a gesture of self-care. And when we're ready, let's carefully roll the entire body over to one side on the floor. Each of us breathing in the many, many jewels of our practice 
and exhaling all of the warmth, kindness, encouragement, and love that we have for each other, for our world around us, and for ourselves. When we're ready, with our eyes still closed, let's make our way back up to an easy seated posture. And I invite each one of us here to bring the palms together at heart center in prayer pose, Anjali Mudra. And let's start to rub those hands vigorously, warming them today. And let's use our warm hands to gently cover our closed eyes. And that wonderful heat that we find radiating there is inviting our eyes to slowly open and we bring our hands to rest upon our laps. Thank you so much for joining me today to stimulate our Vishuddha throat chakra. Clear minds, kind words, compassionate hearts. Namaste.